Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this haunting call. Whales truly are some of the coolest animals on earth, and humpback whales are no exception. The males of the species are known for their songs, which last from 10 to 20 minutes and are actually pretty complex. They will repeat these songs for hours at a time, and it honestly isn't exactly known why they sing these songs at all. All the males in the group will produce the same song and it will change seasonally. The females are also able to produce noise, but for some reason, it is only the males who seem to produce these long songs. It is unclear how the whales even produce these sounds, however, because they don't actually have vocal cords. This is all super cool and interesting, but the whole reason you're here is for the sound, so let's take a listen to a more haunting track released by the humpback whale. Okay, so please tell me I'm not alone in thinking that that was the most beautifully haunting sound I've ever heard come from the sea. But also, imagine being alone in the ocean, not knowing what that was, and then hearing it. Probably pretty terrifying, right? At least we're all safe here in YouTube land. In our number 9 spot today, we have this marine chorus. Okay, so out of context, if I played you this sound, what would you think it is? Definitely not something underwater, right? Well, as it turns out, this sound was indeed captured under the water, and these are the sounds of fish calls. While I always expected the chorus of marine animals to sound a little more similar to the stylings of Sebastian the crab, apparently that isn't even close. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know that most fish had calls, but it turns out that our human ears just can't perceive all of the hoots, moans, barks, and chirps that take place in the vast seas. This recording actually helped scientists realize that there are fish who sing together in a chorus every day at dusk and dawn. There have now been around 800 species of fish that have been identified and confirmed to make some form of noise, and apparently some fish even engage in shouting matches in noisier parts of the ocean, which is kind of hilarious to imagine. I guess on the list of creepy noises, this one is less creepy and more just informative? In our number 8 spot today, we have the whistle. This is a sound that was first recorded in 1997 by the NOAA and was the source of many mysteries for years while people speculated about what may have caused the sound. While it still isn't exactly clear, it is now believed that the sound may have come from an underwater volcano eruption. If you didn't know, underwater or submarine volcanoes are located in all oceans on our Earth and they're extremely interesting. There are certain kinds of marine animals that only exist near these extreme environments. Many submarine volcanoes are located near the areas of tectonic plate formations, which are also known as mid-ocean ridges. There is a YouTube user called Some Canadian, and they left a comment on a video of this whistle sound that pretty much sums it up exactly. First, we'll listen to the sound played at 10 times the original speed. The comment read, quote, It could be the sound of something moving through tunnels. One, volcanic eruptions and gases. Two, something big and hungry. You choose. I think they might really be onto something there. In our number 7 spot today, we have Bloop. Why are all of the weirdest ocean sounds first recorded in 1997? Bloop is another one that came from that year, and it was a loud and unusual sound that was placed as occurring several times off the southern coast of South America, and it was so loud that it could be heard over 5,000 kilometers away. At first, researchers were confused because while the sound was actually similar to known sounds of living creatures, it was just way too loud that not even the blue whale, the largest living creature, could have produced it. So what is it then? Well, as it turns out, it is in fact not the Kraken, and instead it is actually consistent with ice quakes that are generated by large icebergs as they crack and fracture. It seems like this sound going with that explanation doesn't really make sense, but hey, I'm no scientist. But here's the sound for you to judge for yourself. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Western Pacific Bio Twang. In 2014, researchers and scientists heard weird sounds coming from the Mariana Trench, which, for the record, seems like the worst place for there to be strange noises coming from. For years, experts couldn't pin down this sound, and it was dubbed the Western Pacific Bio Twang, and while there is now a theory that was proposed by researchers from Oregon State University, they have also said that they might be entirely wrong. First, for reference, here's a little clip of the sound I'm talking about. 
Okay, so if you're like me, my mind immediately went to something alien related or some sort of creature that perhaps we haven't yet discovered. I mean, this is the Mariana Trench we're talking about. The theory put forward by the Oregon State researchers was that perhaps this may be a new type of baleen whale call. Okay, that's probably the best of all of the options, but I really don't like when someone tells me the answer to a scientific mystery only to tell me that that might not actually be the answer at all. While the low part of the sound would make sense to attribute to the baleen whale, it's the end high pitched twangy part that would be incredibly unique. The wide range of frequencies in the sound are what continues to baffle those who are trying to find the source of this mysterious sound. In our number five spot today, we have Julia. Julia is a sound that was recorded in 1999 by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, which I've already talked about today. It sounds like it could be straight out of a horror movie, so considering it was a sound that came from our ocean, and at first no one could tell where it had come from, it really was quite frightening. The sound has now likely been demystified, as researchers are pretty positive they know the origin of it. It is now believed that the sound was caused by an iceberg running aground off Antarctica. The sound, however, was insanely loud. It was so loud that it could be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. Researchers were later able to narrow down what they believe may have been the point where the sound originated, although they've never actually been able to pinpoint it exactly. Most of the time when people hear the Julia sound, they hear it sped up at 16 times the original speed, but today we are going to listen to a clip of the sound at regular speed because I think it is much more eerie this way. In our number four spot today, we have Knock. Okay, this is one that I'll admit was not captured by a submarine, but it was still underwater and it truly is terrifying. A few years ago, a beluga whale named Nock, who was unfortunately in captivity, was recorded as he swam below the water. Beluga whales have been called the canaries of the sea, and for good reason, but Nock really wanted to up the ante and instead blessed us all with this sound. <laughs> Nock had this uncanny ability to mimic the rhythm and tone of human voices, and it truly is kind of frightening. It of course is also a little sad, as part of this was probably because he spent most of his life being forced to listen to humans speak because he was being held in captivity. Before this recording of Nock, the voices of belugas and their sometimes human-like sounds have been talked about, but Nock was the first time it was recorded, and honestly, I kind of wish it hadn't been. In our number three spot today, we have the bio duck. Since the 1960s, this sound has absolutely stumped researchers who heard it. This sound was basically what the name attributed to it would suggest. It sounded like some sort of mechanical duck. For decades, researchers would hear this sound and it would often be heard and recorded again in the spring and winters. After all of these years though, it seems as though the answers to this mysterious sound are finally coming to light. In 2013, researchers attached sensors that collect acoustic data to two whales. One of those tags recorded for 18 hours and the other for 8, and the whales they were attached to were traveling with other whales in groups of 5 to 40, and they were all eating basically the entire time. Throughout this time, with the tags on the whales, there were a total of 32 calls heard, and this data is what led researchers to finally understand where the bio duck sound was coming from. As it turns out, this mysterious sound was actually the call of the mink whale. Researchers still aren't exactly clear as to what the call means to the whales, but it was a fantastic discovery that finally closed an almost 50 year old scientific mystery. In our number two spot today, we have Upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that also includes what kind of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound, out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here's a clip of that sound played at 20 times the original speed.
It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but it is also possible that it's not. So who really knows? In our number one spot today, we have an earthquake. Okay, so to add another creepy Mariana Trench sound to this list, we have one that was taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep. In fact, it was the first ever sound recording to be taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep, so it's a pretty cool scientific advancement as well as a terrifying sound. Despite the crushing pressures and the fact that there's no sunlight, the Challenger Deep is actually pretty noisy, and that is because of the fact that sound travels a really long way underwater, which ends up kind of turning the Challenger Deep into a sort of echo chamber of oceanic sounds. So while the recording was able to pick up things like the sound of a boat almost 11 kilometers overhead and the sounds of whale calls, they were also able to pick up the sound of a magnitude 5 earthquake rumbling near Guam on July 16th, 2015. Lie. While being one of the scariest things I've ever heard, this is also one of the coolest things I've ever heard in my life too. Science really is just so cool sometimes. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the train. The train is a sound that was first recorded on March 5th, 1997. It is often referred to as the train because, well, it kind of sounds like a train's whistle or maybe like the sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks. But in my opinion, it just sounds like a ghost meetup. Despite the years it's been since this sound was captured, no one is entirely sure where it came from. The current belief is that it may have been from an extremely large iceberg in the Ross Sea near Cape Adair, but that is still only a guess. The steady hum might be the sound of the keel of an iceberg dragging across the sea floor. But what if it's not? In our number 9 spot today we have this underwater knocking. This knocking sound was picked up by an underwater hydrophone and for a while it had people stumped until they were able to find the culprit. Before we talk about what this sound is coming from, imagine being in the deep, dark, icy waters and hearing that sound. It is straight up out of a horror movie, but as it turns out, the real source isn't quite as scary. This is actually the sound of a species of haddock fish. These types of haddock are a ray finned fish that can be found in the North Atlantic Ocean. The males of the species will produce this drumming or pulsating sound in order to attract mates during the mating season. Outside of the mating season, a similar sound is also produced, and that is known to be used during a aggressive encounters with other male fish. In our number 8 spot today we have the 52 Hertz whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't even really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's male or female or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. This whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 52 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly was going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how would we possibly know for sure? In our number 7 spot today we have Slow Down. Slow Down is another sound that was captured in 1997, but this one was captured on May 19th of that year. The 90s was apparently the height of the capturing weird unexplained ocean sounds wave because wow, there are so many. This sound got its name because of the fact that the sound descends in frequency over about 7 minutes. Again, this is another sound I would have just assumed was ghosts, but luckily there are people out there who know more than me who continue to research these things and try to get to the bottom of these mysteries. This sound was so loud it was detected by different sensors nearly 5,000 kilometers apart from each other. Scientists were able to locate the sound as coming from somewhere off the Antarctic Peninsula. While they couldn't directly 
correctly find the source of the sound, they use their deductive reasoning and it is currently believed that the sound might have been the result of a drifting iceberg as it scratched the sea floor until it slowly came to a stop. I guess the icebergs were just moving around a lot in the mid to late 90s. In our number 6 spot today we have the Psy Whale. Here we are again with another whale sound that just truly doesn't seem like it should be the sound coming out of any living creature, but hey, in the sea the rules are just different and everything's a little weirder. These whales can be found in subtropical, temperate and subpolar waters around the world. They are sadly a species that has seen their numbers decrease rapidly, especially due to the historical commercial whaling that took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. The exact number of these whales that currently exist is unknown, but they are a species that is currently listed as being threatened. Like many other whales, these guys use their voice to communicate with one another and that is where this sound comes from. Other than the sound that they're making, the increase in noise under the water, especially man-made noise, is actually a threat to their existence. The sound can interrupt their normal behavior and drive them away from areas that are important to their survival, and sometimes intense exposure to noise can even cause one of these whales to strand and die, which truly is just awful. In our number 5 spot today we have Star Wars. Okay, you might be wondering why something relating to Star Wars is on this list since we are talking about the sea, but just listen to the sound and then tell me what you think. That sounds kind of like little fighter jets or something, right? Well, it definitely had some people stumped for a while when it was first heard, but luckily this one has a fairly simple and harmless explanation. The Star Wars sound is actually coming from dwarf mink whales. Apparently a lot of strange ocean noises end up either being attributed to whales or icebergs. Considering how creepy this sound can be when they have no explanation, I'm kind of glad to know that most things end up being relatively harmless and way less scary in reality. In our number 4 spot today we have the Atlantic Cod. Atlantic Cod are known for their ability to produce clicks, growls and thumps as their way of communicating. The clicks I'm about to show you are apparently intended to ward off potential predators including humans and I truly feel like it might be working. While this sound was recorded on a hydrophone, it's been said that divers who have encountered these fish in the ocean have also been able to hear these warning clicks so as to let them know not to get close. These fish also of course have different less aggressive sounds as well that they use for things like mating season or to be able to warn others of their kind of potential dangers that are lurking in the icy waters. In our number 3 spot today we have the ping. This is a sound that no one has been able to figure out where it is coming from. I'll admit this one wasn't captured by a submarine, but I had to include it because it is coming from the water and it is so mysterious that scientists and even the military still aren't sure what exactly is going on here. This sound can be heard in the Kikitalik region of the Canadian territory Nunavut and is coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait. This sound has been described by some as a ping and by others as a hum, but the main issue is that this area is a hunting area and whatever the sound is, it is scaring off all of the wildlife. Because of the reports of this mysterious sound, even the military came to investigate, but still, no one is exactly sure where this sound could have been coming from or what it could be linked to. For now, the mysteries that lay below the Arctic ice are destined to remain a secret. In our number 2 spot today we have, hmm? This sound is one that was captured on a hydrophone and it truly sounds like someone just trying to add some infliction to their voice to ask a question. I'll give you one second to take a guess first. Did you guess another whale? Well, you'd be right then. This sound is coming from the North Atlantic right whale and is not just the sound of a super confused person. These whales are one of the world's endangered large whale species with there being only 400 left in the Atlantic Ocean. The sound you just heard is the sound they use to communicate with others of their species. Their sounds are usually low frequency moans or groans and they are used to indicate things like warnings, contact, aggression or just other social signals in general. In our number one spot today we have boom. Okay, maybe the last one was a little too easy so here's another sound that I'm gonna let you guess and maybe it will be a little harder this time. Do 
you have a guess as to what that big boom was? Apparently, that sound was caught on a hydrophone and it is coming from an underwater oil rig. Remember when we were talking about the man made sound pollution of the deep sea and how it affects the marine life? This is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. I don't have the solution on how to make it better or how to fix the problem. All I know is that it is one, and honestly, how could it not be? That sound freaked me out while I was sitting comfortably at my desk researching, so I can imagine hearing it when I wasn't expecting it in the comfort of my own home. That just sounds awful. Number nine, shifting plates. I remember this back in 2013. I hope this rings a bell for some of you watching. In 2013, a woman in British Columbia over in Canada heard a trumpet sound, a low, slow, like a trumpet, or so she thought. At first, nothing came from these claims or videos, just a few comments saying, that's weird, which it is. But then it started to happen in areas all over the world, from Texas to Norway, so something's going on. It's the same slow, loud trumpet sound. Well, it turns out the sound was coming from the ocean this whole time. Because again, in 2018, a little more recently, the same low-pitched humming noise was heard in Hawaii, Kenya, and then Chile. So what we're hearing all these years are shifting tectonic plates. That's our best guess at this point. Undersea volcanoes, sure, just moving some deep sea furniture around. It's gotta be loud. Some folk believe that there's another dimension underneath the ocean floor, so maybe this is just a door opening and closing. Maybe this is the bouncer being like, oh, come on in, okay. Either way, I'm good here on land, never going down there. Number eight, quacker. Quaker Oats, Quacker Oats, the quacker. Not to be confused with the Kraken, he's a little bit different. This is the quacker. A loud quack was heard during the Cold War, so a little bit older. It was recorded while Soviet Navy ballistic missile submarines were heading through North Atlantic and Arctic waters. They heard quacking, or ribbit, something like like some sort of deep sea duck. Whenever submarines passed a certain area, this loud quack would come from deep below, and it came from an object that was moving around. That's the mysterious part. That's why we threw it on our list today. The Soviets thought they were overhearing secret US tech, you know? Like I guess some deep sea duck radar. I've heard rumors of that one. That's good. That was in a James Bond movie for sure. Scientists believe that it came from a giant squid, which is somehow more alarming than the ocean floor. Number seven, underwater, underworld. Back in 2018, a diver was exploring flooded caves in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. They were on the beach having a good time. Then they saw this opening about a foot and a half wide, barely enough to fit one person. And this diver was like, eh. They went through, that's terrifying. I, first of all, bravo, hats off, that's extremely brave. But then they found this underwater tunnel that connected the Sakatoon Cave and the Dos Ojos Cave System. So this is a huge discovery. Because now this is considered one of the largest underwater cave systems in the world. In total, it runs about 347 kilometers long. I can't even fathom how long that is underwater. This cave has been untouched since the last ice age, rightfully so. And the 200 pockets inside are filled with bones, Mayan altars, fossils belonging to now extinct animals, it's basically a time capsule from 15,000 years ago. So if you're diving through small cave entrances, you know, don't go alone, or you might get stuck in time, apparently. Or you might find thousands of bones or a possible entrance to the underworld. Yeah, that's also a hot rumor for this underwater mine cave system. Ah, I forgot my flippers. Can't go, sorry guys. Have fun though, sounds like a great time. Number six, Titan Ocean. This one is literally out of this world. Coming from one of the many, many moons of Saturn, Titan, around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water underneath its massive shell of ice. That's pretty exciting. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration. And now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. NASA has also detected low frequency radio waves on this moon before. So perhaps there's something going on under the space sea. Our own ocean is mysterious enough, let alone receiving signals from an ocean in space. No thanks, I don't want to even think about what's up there. Number Five, the Kraken. Jack Sparrow's worst nightmare. Is it real? Is the Kraken actually a real thing? Where does this come from? Well, maybe. The giant squid is not that far-fetched. Some creatures in the ocean are massive as is, like for example, this manta ray off the coast of Trinidad. If the internet didn't exist and I saw this in real life, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So of course, many sailors reported seeing the Kraken at one point or another. The ocean's terrifying. For ages now, sailors specifically from Norway and Greenland have all continued to share eyewitness reports of a giant sea monster, the Kraken. Apparently it had tentacles big enough to pull you and your mateys right off of the ship. In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeda Steenstrup found a large squid beak and then soon after he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So people were trying to help him out. So he concluded with all these gross puzzle pieces that the kraken is real and it's part of a species of giant squid called Archituthus dux, which is Latin for ruling squid. Very little is known about giant squid seeing as they're so hard to track, but we did get a photo of one back in 2009.
2005 and a video of one in 2013. Number three, The Green Flash. I watch way too many superhero movies, so this next one had me pacing around my living room for a hot minute. Who is this? Who is this guy? Who's this Green Flash man? The Green Flash phenomena happens in the ocean. So far, we've only observed the flash above water, but I'm sure there's some mysterious happenings going on below, you know? I'm sure there's a few confused fish over there when it happens. This happens during sunset and sunrise. Best time to see the green flash is on a clear evening over water and the air must be clean. So if you're in a polluted city, you're like, damn it. The reason we see a green flash is because of our boy, Roy G. Biv. This is the G in Roy G. Biv. Sunlight reflects off the atmosphere like a big old prism and in turn for thousands of years, human have probably been like, what was that? I just saw a green flash. I keep seeing it every night. What is going on? They're probably so confused for thousands of years. No, it's not a Justice League villain. It's just the sunset. Number two, HMS Daedalus. This 19th century warship belonged to the Royal Navy. It was this big class beauty equipped with 19 guns and it launched at Woolock Dockyard in 1844. It was a big deal. Four years later, Captain McQA, along with his officers and crew, all set sail to St. Helena, but during their commute, they were visited. Yeah, this is why we have the guns on the side of the ship. If any trouble comes along, be it pirates, whatever the case, we're now equipped. Thing is, this visitor didn't come from the sides or the front or the back, it came from below, in the form of a 60 foot long serpent. And it hung around for 20 minutes, apparently, with its head breaking the surface of the water occasionally. The captain said it was so close under the ship that if it was one of his own crew members under there, he could have easily recognized their face. That's how clear the water was. It wasn't choppy or cloudy, it was a normal day, otherwise. So do we think 60 foot long sea snakes exist? Who's to say, I mean, considering this list, I'd say yeah. We barely explored our own ocean. And finally, number one, the Milky Sea Phenomenon. This one you can see from space, so we're leaving the biggest and brightest for last, folks. The Milky Sea Phenomenon was first observed back in 1864 by Captain Raphael Semmes. Captain Raphael Semmes journaled it aboard his CSS Alabama. He wrote about passing from the deep blue waters into a patch of water so bright that it startled him. The whole face of nature seemed to change, and with a little stretch of imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. That's not an exaggeration as well. This phenomena is something out of Avatar, really. It's so alien-like. Bioluminescence is part of the reason for this ghostly bright blue appearance, but sailors say there is something sinister about it as well. To this day, we don't fully understand how bioluminescence works, but it's continuing to blow our minds. For example, we just discovered a new shark. We just found a glowing shark. A glowing shark, what is happening here? The Milky Sea phenomenon is bigger than a glowy shark and it can span around 100,000 square miles. So you'll see it if it's around, you'll probably see it. It lasts for a few nights too, so I don't blame these sailors for getting spooked out. In 2005, we got low orbit satellites to snap a pic of this phenomenon, but even so, we don't fully understand why it happens. But we're trying our best.